And the expiration of Title 42 under Biden has already seen a renewed surge at the southern border. But just how bad things will get is unknown. But someone who always can put his finger on exactly what is happening is, of course, comedian, satirist and all around great guy, Alex Stein. Alex, great to see you as always. So uh, it's been a busy week there in the States. Uh, people pouring over the borders. Donald Trump on CNN. What's your week been like, Alex? Well, my week has been busy, but let's be honest, guys. I'm pro-immigration. I want every immigrant to come to America. But what I'm against is illegal sex trafficking and drug trafficking. We have a drug problem here in America. The amount of opioid overdose deaths due to fentanyl is at a rate that we've never recorded. And so every single ounce of fentanyl, I mean, maybe not every single ounce, but the majority of it is coming through our southern border. So it's not that I'm anti-immigration. It's that why are we letting our citizens get poisoned by drugs and letting these children get sex trafficked all for, you know, some sort of political ideology that doesn't make sense? Because America, yeah, it's a land of milk and honey. But trust me, they're not bringing milk and honey up here. They're bringing child migrants and fentanyl. Alex, we heard so much about the issue of kids in cages and, and the treatment of people crossing the southern border illegally under Trump. And now we have got kids in cages in record numbers. We've had more than 2 million a year crossing illegally on that southern border. And the media is largely uninterested in, in something that was a top-line issue for them under Trump. Well, it's because, Rita, you know this here in America, they care more about a guy murdering somebody on a subway here in New York City that had 44 prior arrests. Now, I'm not saying that that person deserves to uh, get murdered, but the mainstream media is silent when it comes to this issue because they're very selective and they're very selective with their outrage because, honestly, I mean... You see 30 migrants go in front of Kamala Harris's house and they make it seem like it's the biggest deal. I'm in Dallas, Texas at Bachman Lake, the park where I walk my dogs. Every day I see 20, 30, 40. And they're immigrants because they still have the mask on, they have a backpack, they don't really know what to do or where to go. And it's an issue that, like I said, it's not about the human. I mean, the human rights, I think we should help out people that are real refugees. But by just saying you're you know, coming here for asylum, that's not the case. These people aren't coming here for a better life. They're coming here for, you know, ulterior motives, to say the least. James. Well, I mean, how much of this, too, do you think is um, part of a broader plan by the Democrats and the Biden administration to have this huge surge and then figure out some sort of way to grant an amnesty uh, and mint a whole lot of new potential Democrat voters? I mean, it's sort of hard not to look at this and see some sort of cynical plan uh, along those lines. Well, James, you're an expert on uh, America pol American politics, and my biological father, Tucker Carlson, you know, he got a lot of flack for saying that there is some sort of great replacement theory. Now, I'm not saying that that's necessarily true, but if you look at the voters in Chicago, they feel very threatened that illegal immigrants are going to be, you know, given more social services than citizens here in America. So, I mean, you can feel it. You can tell that that they're doing this on purpose because they want to be able to stuff ballots in certain areas because here in America we have an electoral college. So in certain areas, you don't really need uh, everybody. You only need really to win in certain huge cities. So it, it, it's all a plan. I hate to say it like this, but their plan uh, is working incredibly well because we cannot stop the rush. And I, and I think it's only going to get worse. First. Well, when, now, you've Alex, got, sorry, Grace, was like, when you've got millions coming over, it is going to have some sort of a dem demographic change and if their voting patterns are a certain way. But uh, let's talk about some of your antics recently. <laughs> I've seen you just making friends and, and making people happy to see you. Let's have a look. <laughs> Explain <laughs> why those ladies seem to be worked up a little. What was happening there? Well, you just got a you know good representation of the party of tolerance and acceptance. <laughs> <laughs> Rights rally, and I'm not homophobic, I'm not transphobic, but I went there to ask these trans people what rights does a trans person not have because they're in certain 
jurisdictions in California, you actually get a monthly stipend. So actually a trans person is entitled to more rights than some some other people. So you ask them these simple questions, they, they absolutely melt down. They threw hot coffee on me, they assaulted me. And, and I just wanna make this clear, I'm not anti-trans at all. If you're an adult and you wanna be trans, that's your prerogative. But what they're trying to do is they're trying to give hormone blockers to children. They're trying to give mastectomies to 16-year-olds, 15-year-olds. They're making lifelong decisions where these same kids can't sign up for the military. They can't vote in an election. They can't get a tattoo. As a matter of fact, a guy in Tennessee was just arrested for piercing his son's ear. Yet, if you're a parent that wants, wants to give your kid a mastectomy, that would be rewarded, and they would probably put you on CNN you know, and give you a... a <laughs> Uh, Alex, um, speaking of CNN, Donald Trump went on to CNN and uh, the lefties a complete meltdown. Now, I'm hoping that this might be the beginning. I think we might see Alex Stein on CNN next. I mean, I think uh, I think that's the way that this has to go. But uh, uh, a huge conundrum, wasn't it, for CNN? Because they got the ratings which they wanted. But in fact, it struck me that Trump really came out the better out of the exchange. What were your what was your take on it? Well, of course. And, you know, the term jump the shark, CNN jumped the shark a long time ago, in my opinion. But they're trying to hold on to the last little bit of Trump. And I don't think anybody wants to see Trump run in 2024 more than CNN. <laughs> and they just got the most ever. It seems like they're trying to make some changes and try to appeal to a wider audience. But listen, they jumped the shark. Everybody knows CNN is what we call fake news. So I'm happy that they gave Trump the platform. I think he totally dominated Caitlin Collins personally. But at the same time, Donald Trump is not going to be able to save the sinking ship that once was a great network called CNN. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Alex Stein, always great to chat to you. And uh, I hope CNN take up my tip and put Alex Stein on. That's where he belongs. <laughs> Absolutely. That would change the network forever. Fantastic. Alex, always great to see you.